Thanks for tuning in to German Chocolate Life of a Mixed Girl and this special series, The Experts I Know. And today I have an expert I've been extremely excited about because she's been my friend for several years, very good friend, been with me through all my ups and downs in the past about five plus years. And that is my friend, Marie-Louise Huber. Uh, she is a nutritionist, health coach, and a women's health expert. She's the head of nutrition at Hello Inside, which is an app designed for women to monitor their blood sugar. And as I said, we've been friends for a long time. Uh, we'll go over where you can find her later and look up all of the amazing other podcasts she's been in and articles she's wrote, and she sends out newsletters, and she does all kinds of cool stuff. So welcome. Thank you for having me, Jess. I, I'm very excited to be here, even though it's like super early, but I'm excited. <laughs> yes, good point. So I am in Florida and Louisa is in Colorado. Yes, beautiful Boulder, even though it's not sunny today, but usually it is. So oh, I was I just going to ask, but it's still early. <laughs> yeah, we will see if it, the sun comes out. If not, it will be there tomorrow. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> Well, we're going to go right into the how did we meet? I already said we've known each other for a little over five years. And uh, so Louise and I worked for a tech startup, which was a startup at the time. And we were in the, I'm going to say German department, but it was German speaking because Louise is Austrian. <laughs> my Österreichische Freundin. <laughs> For my German listeners. <laughs> so, which is always really cool. And I know that was, it's sometimes like challenging because when we talk about <clears throat> German, it's always like assumed that it's Germany, but we have Austria and then Switzerland and maybe other places too. <laughs> So uh, if you do hear uh, an, an accent, it's a wonderful, unique Austrian accent. Yeah, I try not to sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger, <laughs> even though he's probably one of the most famous Austrians besides Mozart. Um, but nobody knows how Mozart would have spoken English. So we all know how Arnie sounds um, and I try not to sound like him. But there may be one or two terms similar to him. <laughs> if we say it too loud, someone might try to enter that into an, an AI program. What would Mozart sound like? <laughs> True. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. <laughs> we can do anything now. <laughs> Which that's really funny that you say Mozart because uh, the hometown where I'm from in Augsburg, we have the Mozart house. And even though he's not from there, but it's like a very prominent place for him too. So that's another connection. Interesting. I didn't even know that. Mm, it's really cute. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So I said that you're a nutritionist and a health coach and a women's uh, health expert. So what exactly, if we're going into this nutritional route, especially uh, speaking about health, does a dietitian do or um, what is your expertise in, in that field? Mm -hmm. Super cool question. Um, I have to say that I did all my studies besides my master in public health. Um, I did all of them in Austria. So the route is a little different than it is in the US, but basically the difference between a nutritional scientist, which is, which is actually like what I am, and a dietitian, that's what I am too, is that the dietitians are more working on like the um, practical stuff, right? They are the ones who consult um, people in hospitals or with special diseases or like create meal plans versus nutritional scientists, those who have studied it, or nutritionists, um, those are the ones who have like more of the theoretical background. Those are the re researchers. Those are the ones who develop like studies and look into stuff so that then the dietitians can make the recommendations, right? So that's kind of like the fine line. Um, and I also know that in, uh, in the U.S., um, becoming a, diet a registered dietitian is very hard. Um, you have to go like through a long program and then have to go through the internships and like get a certain amount of hours um, where you really consult and coach um, patients. Um, and then you can like get extra certifications. For example, if you are a sports dietitian, right, then you have to sit for another exam so that you can then become a sports dietitian. So whoever listens to that uh, podcast, I highly recommend to like look for the credentials of people, like where have they studied? Because you could also get like a certification from a random institute, but it's not like proper. Um, so I would recommend wherever you go and look for, seek advice, make sure that they are 
they, they have the credentials. That's a good point. That's uh, similar to in the field of psychology. So I have exactly. my master's in psychology is also more theoretical and in, in science and research. I can't do therapy. <laughs> and so exactly. I would also have to go through like a internship and residency and, and all of those kinds of things. So uh, same thing. And you see people coming in from different paths and then you have to see what are the limitations for that person in that field, especially at a time where everyone's really loud on social media and and we all love to read books you and i especially like we also connected most i think because we're so interested in a lot of theories um uh, especially we uh, got interested into personalities and stuff but just because we like to read and we get into it doesn't mean that we can put that under the umbrella of what we do so very good point always check (laughs) and also because you mentioned like i'm a women's health expert um it's what I do right now is like focusing on all stages of like a woman's health, like starting through like, I wouldn't say puberty, probably not, but then like everything that happens after, if you're trying to conceive or not, and like pregnancy and postpartum period, which I just went through myself. But I also learned a lot about menopause, um, even though I have not had my menopause or I'm not in my menopausal years yet, but it's just like a very interesting field and it is different. And I also feel like just because I have not gone through a certain stage, it also like I can still be an expert in it um, because I have done my due diligence in that aspect. Um, Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. You also like important to consider that. Yes, 100 percent. If that's the field that you study, that same with like people that are drug or alcohol counselors doesn't mean you have to have been addicted necessarily to uh, be good in the field. Yeah. Another really good point. I want to jump into things, especially talking about trends and what people love to tell people to do. Oh, don't eat sugar. Don't eat butter. Don't. (laughs) You should do the caveman diet and everything should be keto and you should be vegan. And you're like, ah, (laughs) what is like one of those common myths or trends where you're like, we, I don't want to say necessarily debunk them, but where we should look into more information when we consider trying it out Mm -hmm. if it's for us that's a super yeah that's a super good question um since you mentioned like i work for hello inside which is an app that is designed to help women understand the continue like their blood sugar levels um even though they don't have diabetes um like blood sugar management um and continuous glucose monitoring is like the official term um is is trendy right now, right? Um, and I do strongly believe that it's super important that we get like the understanding of what happens within our body because we kind of like have lost connection to ourselves, right? Like hmm. we have like, so as you mentioned, like there's so much stuff on social media and in the internet and like we read about it and we read about like, I don't know, like different kinds of wars and like have what we all know what's happening somewhere in the world, but we don't necessarily know what's happening within ourselves Um, and like the continuous glucose monitoring is one way to understand what happens in my body right and I'm not only talking about nutrition Um, if you ever get the chance and the hand on like a continuous glucose monitor um, you will understand like how stress impacts your body right or like how um, your sleep actually impacts or affects how you feel right so it's not necessarily only nutrition but like in our entire lifestyle And the reason why I bring it up is, yes, it is very trendy to monitor your glucose, like to monitor your glucose levels, which is like the same as blood sugar, right? Just to make sure that they're all in the same term. Thanks Um, for saying that. Yes, interchangeably. Um, But I also feel like it's super important that we don't get lost in all the data we get, right? Um, And so I feel like for me personally, the trend is we want, like there are so many people out there who want to check everything in their body And then they actually lose, again, the sense of what is happening because they are trying to optimize everything. And then they say that they enjoy life, but then they kind of like get lost in optimizing every single step what they are doing. And at the end of the day, they don't have any good quality of life anymore because they, again, like they think, for example, like that's maybe one myth um, that glucose friendly or like optimized nutrition doesn't contain any carbs right Hmm. because carbs are the food that will like increase your glucose levels but it's also important to understand that not all carbs are equal 
right? So it's really important to differentiate between what you eat, how you eat it, and like all the other impacts I was just talking about, how they actually impact your glucose levels. And then once you realize and, and internalize that, you will understand that you can have like kind of like every food you want. There are just like certain tweaks and ticks and tips and tricks and hacks you can apply so that you can actually enjoy it and it won't impact your blood sugar level that much, right? It's so, so interesting when we hear blood sugar level and you say it's not just uh, diabetes, but then it also affects like the sleep and the stress and all of those things. So what could be another thing to describe that, what it impacts on your body then? why blood sugar specifically is the thing that we're monitoring so we all need blood sugar blood sugar is kind of like the energy um so let's let's we all have a blood sugar level so i think i should phrase it that way right like if we eat certain things um especially when we eat carbs um they are broken down in our body and then like glucose comes out of it um and glucose is the one energy source um where our body like lifts on. Sure, there are ketones as well, um, but the the immediate and quicker um, source is blood sugar. Um, and so that's why we all need it. We all have it. And then the thing why we always connected with di- people with diabetes is the fact that there's this hormone called insulin. Um, and insulin is the one that regulates our blood sugar. Insulin is the hormone that co- brings our blood sugar levels down um, so that we have like a balanced glucose level. Um, And unfortunately, not everybody has a well-functioning like insulin response, right? And that's what we know then with happen happens with diabetes. People like their cells don't respond to the hormone insulin as good anymore, or it doesn't even produce insulin. So that's what happens with diabetes. And that's why we connected with diabetes. In an ideal world, we all have like proper amount of insulin and glucose. And so like it balances us out um, throughout the day. But there are like certain foods. I don't know, like for me, example, um, potatoes. Like I am really good with, and that's another cool thing. Everybody responds to food individually. Like there is no, mm-hmm. like it's very unique, right? Um, like if you eat something um, and I eat it, we probably won't have the same response. Like the, the values will be different. Um, the curve will look different. So that's like the cool and fascinating thing about it. That totally makes sense. <laughs> and, and so that's kind of like why it's important to monitor your glucose levels, like at certain points in your life or like seasons, um, because then you will understand, okay, like potatoes will spike my blood sugar. Um, but for example, pasta won't. In my sense, in my example, for you, it may be different, right? And so that's yeah. the, the fascinating part. And we also, like, if we monitor our glucose levels, and then it brings me back to, like, monitoring and understanding, um, we will understand how we feel, right? For example, if I eat pasta, uh, if I eat potatoes, my blood sugar goes high and then drops. And, like, when my blood sugar goes high quickly, that's when I feel tired, but most people will feel tired when their blood sugar drops like super low, right? Yeah. So also their response is very different. And so for me, I understand if I eat a handful of gummy bears, obviously I know uh, my blood sugar <laughs> will go up. But I also understand I will feel tired at a certain point because my blood sugar response will be like that. And then I can decide, like, do I want to go through that? Um, or like, what steps can I take to de- like decrease the impact on my blood sugar so that I don't feel tired. So it's so interesting because it's different for everyone. And I must say when I was pregnant 12 years ago, I would totally feel that, oh my God, my blood sugar, I got to eat something like now. If I was in the grocery store, I'd have to open it. And I feel ever since then, when I get that feeling, I I feel like, oh, that's that same feeling I had. I was like, I got to eat something right now. I feel like Mm -hmm. my blood sugar is, is low. But if I let's, I don't have diabetes. Why is it so extreme at at some points like that you feel it dip so low? Is it something that with the timeframe that you've eaten or things that you've done or hormones? (laughs) So the thing is, um, that's a super good question. Um, it can be, for example, that somebody has already some stage of pre-diabetes, right? So that's kind of like when you realize, okay, what, something is off. Um, 
But it can also happen that your body just did not respond like right away because like it was working on other things, right? And that's right. when like why I feel this continuous glucose monitoring is especially important for women because as I mentioned, like insulin is a hormone, right? But our menstrual cycle is also controlled. Like every process in our body is like controlled by hormones um, in Oof, some extent, yeah. right? <laughs> um, and so depending on like, where you are in your cycle phase or where you are in your life stage, your hormone levels may look different. And insulin is like one of like, I call them like the master hormones, right? Like they are the ones who are like high level and like the body listens to insulin and also to cortisol like all the time, mm -hmm. right? And so if it focuses very much on like controlling the blood sugar because like insulin is so much needed, then all the other hormones that follow like um, testosterone or estrogen um, or progesterone, they don't get a say anymore because like insulin is so loud. I sometimes I call it like the bully of like the hormones um, oh my. or also like <laughs> cortisol, right? So kind of like those are the two loudest hormones. And That's then, my loud one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we talked about it earlier, right? Um, and so it's important to understand like we need to like monitor and manage our glucose so that then eventually our body can also function well with all the other stuff. I think it's it's so interesting because again we're we're talking about uh, the trend of measuring the blood glucose and people are talking about hey uh, for example people are always like us like I'm more like constipated and I know I don't drink enough water blah 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 should eat more fiber okay here I go I'm gonna eat some fiber all of a sudden changing my diet radically adding a bunch of fiber uh, to it and now I. I can't go at all. I'm like, what is happening? Like, I remember so, that conversation. <laughs> then I was like, I have a friend who is in this field. Let me try and find out what am I doing wrong? <laughs> um, but let me ask you again as if it was the first time. Now I know. But if I'm believing people, I can't go as well, which women a lot of times can't go as well. And now I'm adding fiber and I don't drink enough water. What's happening? you are just constipated. Um, it is kind of like if you imagine our um, digestive system like a sink, right? Like if we think about um, our stomach where we get the food in and we eat a lot of fiber, it kind of like constipates the sink. Like it's just clogged, right? And if we don't drink enough, like it can't trigger into our intestines. Um, so it cannot go, it can't trickle down, right? So it's really important that you have enough liquid or like water in that sense so that it kind of like it loosens so that it eventually can go down into um the sink um or the the what's it what is it called the like drain the, probably the drain, the drain <laughs> yeah. and then like the intestine right like think about it in that sense um so that's why important that you drink enough when you add more fiber to your diet because otherwise it will just like you will feel blo bloated you will feel constipated you will have like bad stomach cramps so it's Anything you do, wherever you change your diet, um, one of my advice is actually don't change it all at once. Um, like make it in small increments because otherwise it will be like super hard. Or when you also think about cutting out sugar, because maybe you have had a lot of sugar in your diet recently, right? And if you try to cut it out like right away, you have to understand that in our intestines, there are certain bugs the microbiome, which is like very mm -hmm. important for us. And if we change like our diet rapidly, then it also changes like it, our microbiome can not digest what we are just eating because we don't have the bacteria, which is like in that sense, a good thing to digest it well, right? You may have noticed it like if you go somewhere, I'm not sure if like when you go back to Germany and then you are there for like a certain amount of time, like at the beginning, you can't stomach the food, right? Because like it is different. Um, I wouldn't say it's better or worse. It's like, it is just different, right? Yeah, totally. And the same happens when you travel somewhere. On the one hand, yes, we may have more or less stress. So that also impacts like our digestive functions, but also like the food, like how it is made and like the the ingredients that are used and everything. So it's really important that you're kind of like take a step back um, and don't be too hard on yourself and like do like 
if you ever get to change your diet or if you ever change your diet, do it in small increments and don't try That's a really good reminder because I actually just had a friend in my Kung Fu class. He was like, all right, I'm going to go fully vegan because I got kidney stones. I got other stuff and I need to lose weight. And he got so sick. I was like, you changed it like that overnight? <laughs> I was mm-hmm. like, oh, my God. But yes. people will be like, okay it's January 1st, it's the new year and I'm going to start something exactly. completely new. And then, and that's also like one of the reasons why some of those like new year's resolutions, they fail, right? On the one hand, people try to change too much at once. And then also they don't feel that good or like they don't feel as they had expected. They may even feel worse. Yeah. Right. And so that's not re- I mean, obviously if you feel worse, why should you continue? Right. Like it's, it's absolutely understandable. Right. So that's why I always recommend like pick one thing you want to change and then like try to do it. Um, and then like, also again, like don't be too hard on yourself. Um, and then like, once you have like really fully mastered that part, um, then pick another thing. Right. And then like yeah. go from there. Yeah, I'm like really in tune with my body. I always notice when I feel something, oh, all right, I just recently changed something. Like I added a couple more supplements to it. I take collagen, I take vitamin D because last year Mm. I did a big lab test and my vitamin D was dangerously low, even though Mm. I live in Florida. So, um, uh, and I I went to get that done because I noticed I was feeling kind of depressed. I couldn't sleep well Mm. and all kinds of things, but I knew it had nothing to do with my life per se. Mm. So really like looking into what am I doing different? What am I eating? But I recently added like three different supplements. I was like, oh, this will be good. This will be good. And then all of a sudden I had too much energy at night. Mm. So there was extra B vitamins and turmeric and a bunch of other stuff. And I was like, all right, let me and cut those like, out again. It, it also like, it's not only like what you add, but also like when you add it, right? Like vitamin B is known to like um, make you feel like more alive and like more energetic. And like, if you take vitamin B in the evening, um, well, it's going to be harder to fall asleep. That's kind of like what yeah. the function of that hormone, uh, of the um, micronutrient is, right? Um, so it's really important to understand that too. And I also feel like we tend to take a lot of like different supplements and then they eliminate each other. Like, because like the one effect of this one and the effect of the other one, like they don't match. Um, also thinking about like prenatal vitamins, right? Like, if yeah. you take like iron and like your prenatal, um, they might like cancel the effect, right, of the other one. Um, so just also like whenever you take supplements, make sure that you read like the additional information about like what needs to be known. Um, or otherwise, like contact a dietitian or nutritionist. They can help you guide you through that um, so that you understand like what's the best moment and like to combine those things. Because again, like the effects may be. Um, yeah, it's like med- medication. Exactly. And a lot of times people are taking medication. Uh, they go to one doctor for this and another for that. And then a lot of times nobody looks over if it, exactly. if it and fits. Exactly. And then you just, so just add up and actually it doesn't mm-hmm. benefit you anymore. Yeah, definitely. So when you take it, what you take, if it goes together and if you even need it, because I don't follow the things when people are like, you should really take this. It helps with that. Like I know my Mm. body, but I must say I'm always experimenting with things like I just started uh, six months ago doing Kung Fu and it's like twice a week. And now I started adding stunt training right now twice a week it's going to only be like once. So it's four days a week of intense training. And I am so hungry all <laughs> of the time. <laughs> I, am so, I understand. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm just like, I'm eating all of the right things. And I'm drinking this like healthy protein shake at lunch. And then eating my, my handful of trail nut mix. But you and, also have like a it, higher need, right? It's like you yeah. are doing so much and like, it's also exciting, right? And so it's kind of like extra energy needed. Um, and so it's really important to fuel your body right. Because so do I have more cheat days now? Can I just <laughs> well, eat all the garbage? Well, there's nothing like a cheat day. Like that's one thing I always say. Like it's like enjoy your food and don't see it as something like you need to treat or cheat or whatever. Um, I always have, have a hard time with um, cheat days. Like just find a balance yeah. for yourself and then you don't. Yeah, me too. I mean, well, the way I do it, and I don't know, I guess there is no right or wrong way, but that's why I'm, I'm saying this. So during the week, I have like a routine of what I eat, what I eat for breakfast, my like either slice of toast or yogurt with berries. And then there is like uh, my uh, my fruits and things. And I don't drink coffee first thing in the morning. That doesn't go well. There, Louise awesome. has a really good article about that. <laughs> the first two hours, right? 
Don't do it. (laughs) And uh, then for lunch, usually something small or my protein shake. And then I have like a healthy snack somewhere in between. And then a good dinner where I have like some sort of protein meat, fish, like rice usually and some vegetables. And and that's what I do. But on the weekend, I don't care. I just eat to Mm. feel good. (laughs) Yeah, I like to call that kind of like the 80-20 rule. Um, I'm not sure if we talked about that. But I always say like 80% of the decisions and choices you make are healthy and 20 are like, okay, I don't know, whatever your treat is, right? Whatever your sweet is you want um, or if you don't care, right? And so I feel like that even helps to balance and then like it helps also to be okay with certain decisions you make. Um, So I feel like treating it as a like 80-20 rule um, also helps sometimes to rephrase like those like good or bad terms. I had a cinnamon yesterday all by myself. Wow. Love it. <laughs> Go for it. I was like, oh, that was like, it's not even Saturday yet. <laughs> well, but it was worth it. it. It was worth it and you needed it. And then um, so I, Go for it. But another thing in the sense of somebody who's, uh, and I can only use myself, but maybe someone can relate or it's similar. So I'm doing all this activity and I'm working on my diet. I tend to get my good seven hours of sleep, which I know for myself is like a sweet Mm -hmm. spot. But I can feel with doing everything, even though it's having a decent diet, working out, having uh, good relationships like if it's my partner my child my friends everything kind of seems to be there but I feel so stressed and a lot of times and still very fatigued mm-hmm. I don't does that also come with the age getting used to it or age not really or you know what is something else that you might have to look out for you doing all of the right things and still doesn't feel right all the time yeah I think that's like a a topic or like a situation where many women struggle with maybe also men but I can also only talk about women um, where they're like doing everything they can and then like it's maybe even too much right like just listening to you like I am a very active person myself but listening to you where I'm like wow two time stunt training two time um, kung fu then the podcast and then regular work and then <laughs> mom time and then also like being a great partner right it is a lot on your plate. Um, and I feel like sometimes we don't give ourselves credit for that, that we are doing a lot, right? And then like we also <laughs> think about, we, we are trying to like, on the one hand, we need to nourish ourselves. And then like, we want to like make a good meal for our partner and kid. And like, there's just so much we are trying to achieve that it may be even too much, right? So my, yeah. my advice would be like for somebody who notices like that they are going down that route of like, oh my God, like they're, I'm on a struggle bus. Like there is so many things and like, I don't know, just take, I don't know, like maybe 30 minutes on a weekend, um, sit yourself down um, and write down what you were doing and like how, what are the things that are like really, really, really important for yourself um, and like what could you potentially outsource, right? Like, Hmm. I don't know for example you could say like okay like I have like my training and this and that and then I struggle to get home and get the groceries and like whatever you could maybe talk to your partner and ask them if they are like if they could provide like if they could care for dinner on x day right or also thinking about like maybe meal prepping right I'm thinking okay like on Sundays are the few days where I don't know like I cook rice ahead of time and like I do like some prep so that during the week I can still ensure that I get the right food and like I get a proper nutrition but it cuts some time during the week so I feel less stressed and I get more time to unwind. That totally makes sense because uh, I, I remember um, <laughs> my ex-husband used to always say every time there was a task to do, I'd be like, oh, this. He's like, oh, I'll just take a minute. <laughs> but then I used to be like, well, if everything just takes a minute and we add it up, that's a exactly. lot of minutes that Those we got to do. a lot of minutes, right? And like, <laughs> if you think about that or like also simple like household chores, right? Like maybe there is a day where you say, okay, like I don't need to do the laundry like Monday to Friday, but I always do like the laundry, I don't know, like Saturday morning. Um, And then you know, it's like, it is going to happen and you don't have it just like always in the back of your head and like have to think about it. 
Um, yeah, I'm really lucky in that sense that my partner loves to clean <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> all the time. And he's always like, I don't really like to cook, but then he like already cooks. I was like, if you would have just waited 30 minutes, I would have made it. <laughs> so he like, he's basically taking care of everything at the house. And a lot of times I'm like, can you pick up Alex? And he's like, all right. I was like, I'm so sorry. So I'm, I don't even know. I definitely know I couldn't do everything I'm doing if he wasn't there. So for sure. But to think about other ways to either outsource or choose certain days might help. Like I work with a calendar system already that helps me a little bit with the anxiety of Mm -hmm. all of the things I need to get done. I'm like, all right, I can't do it today, but let me put it here. And some of those things I'll just keep pushing (laughs) in my calendar, prioritizing in the sense, but it does help me a little bit. But to know to sit down and see how I can cut down more or pick certain weeks that might be better for other things is super helpful. So if you're also struggling with your routines or you're planning on doing something new or more or your job changes, that's really good advice. You're going to have to reassess as a matter if it's changing your diet, changing your lifestyle, job moving, you're going to be a mom, (laughs) you know, things change. (laughs) Exactly. So you just actually gave us a really good uh, tip and trick, especially for regular lifestyle, busy lifestyle. But is there anything uh, else that you commonly share that people don't think about, like an easy thing you can do in this busy life? Yes. Um, I would say like I'm I'm a big supporter. And as I mentioned, like I'm a very active person myself. Um, try to get movement and don't always see like movement as an exercise right like if you are stressed um i always recommend just go outside go for a walk for 10 minutes right like being outside like there are even like studies that show like being in the uh, being outside like even though it may be like a gloomy day right um just go outside for 10 minutes and take a few deep breaths um and like just go for a walk right um it can help you so much to relax and unwind on it even on like a busy day right like and also like it does not have to be like a run all the time right or like you just like be mindful about your outside time um i know there are like some studies that show like early morning hours or, like when the sun rises is the best yes it is but don't add that stressor to your daily routine already yeah. right um just try to get outside like whenever you can like for a few minutes um and it will help you to relax and unwind it that well. actually just blew my mind that you said that it's so simple but we don't think about it but i was actually just saying this morning i was like i'm constantly in the car i'm just exactly. driving everywhere i'm in traffic the at my nine to five i have a little office that i'm in all the side and i have a window <laughs> where they they built like a container in front of it so i have two inches of of like a blue sky oh, if I tilt my my sail. and then I go out for a 15 minute sunshine break every day but it gets hot in Florida so eventually so I used to when I lived in Orlando go outside a lot to Disney and all the areas mm-hmm. and I'm hardly ever outside anymore last weekend was the first time on Saturday I went to St. Pete and for the film festival I was walking everywhere I miss walking like you know in Europe we mm-hmm. can walk like everywhere And I was sitting out just having a lunch and I was like, oh, but now when I go outside for like an hour or two, I get so tired from all of the oxygen Mm -hmm. because I'm barely outside anymore. So that's a good point. If I'm driving indoors, just not getting enough. I'm probably not getting enough real oxygen. (laughs) Probably. And then also like if you say like you are on the road so much, um, like it's hard to get the like the time outside in. Right. But what I then would recommend is park I mean it's simple right park the car further away and like you are like to get wherever you need to get and like you park it and then like you, it takes a minute longer to get to the entrance into the building right ah like, like the grocery store exactly right um or whatever right like don't try to park as close as possible but like try to keep in mind of like parking the furthest away you could um and and that can also like already help you um like get more outside time in and the other thing is what i always recommend is and it's a funny trick but it also helps like to to be mindful um is pick one thing you would like to focus on in a week and with that i mean like 
for example, like let's use the car example. Um, have you like when was the last time you listened closely when you buckle up? Um, like when you know, like when you make sure that you are safely in the car. Um, like clicking. The the clicking sound, right? Like when was the last time you noticed that? Um, so one thing I I say also is a like fun exercise, but just to be mindful about it, like get in the car and listen to the sound of like the click when you buckle up. Um, Sounds satisfying. And it's kind of like, right. And then like, if you like do that, like an entire week and like, it's one thing, especially when you're in a car so often, like you don't focus on all the other things. It's like this one sound. Or when you think about opening the window, right? Like whatever like window system you have, like that sound when you open the window or like the first thing you hear when you open the window, like what is it, right? Just pick one sound or like, one structure maybe like I'm as I said like I, I have a baby right now and like he's very much into um, touching things right and it helps me also to realize that things feel different right so yeah. like whenever you listen to this podcast like what are you touching right now how does it feel like is it warm is it soft is it like cold or I don't know maybe it may be a steering wheel or you're just like walking and have your hands in the pocket like what does it actually feel thinking about that also helps you to like center yourself again and like be mindful about what you do and like even though like I'm a nutritionist and dietitian and health coach and expert for that but being in the moment um, is so important for our entire system um, and that also like then translates to nutrition right like chewing totally. like, being properly and like or also like how does the cutlery feel right there are so many things that you can also then translate to any part of life and it doesn't always have to be like the right nutrition in order to feel better. Um, there are other things too. Yeah, that's really good advice. I know sometimes when I really need to just relax and feel grounded, literally, I sit on the tile on yes. the ground and that Love it. it's amazing what it does. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, just... we also have this one friend who loves to like go into the forest or like walk um, on grass, which I can totally relate. Like having the uh. toes in grass is just like an amazing feeling, right? And like, it's just so grounding and whatever you like, whatever you feel is the best for you or like whatever you want to pick, um, just play around and like do this experiment and you will notice like it, it's an immediate stress relief. Ah, oh, well, that's nice and super simple and that anyone can incorporate anywhere at any time exactly. to just get a little peace of mind. So that's a nice ending to it. But so if people want to find you, where would they find you or where can they get in contact with you or see your stuff? Yeah. Um, so you can find me on Instagram, just in the Maria, like full name, Marie Louise dot Huber. Um, I also have a website where I write a lot about like women's health and all areas, um, different phases of life, as I mentioned. Um, and it's also very simple. Um, it's marielouisehuber.com, like my full name together, no hyphen, no space in between. Um, and also like I'm on LinkedIn. If you ever want to like do any like professional stuff, you can also read my CV there. Um, but yeah, I post, I try to be mindful about posting on Instagram and like publishing my newsletter probably every week right now. Um, so yeah. And, and it's so have... good whenever I get <laughs> it, I you. swear. There's always like some nugget. I'm like, how did she know this was like important right now? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And if you have any questions, um, just hit me up. I'm, I'm happy to do my research um, and then create and write a blog post about it. And, or maybe I already have one um, and I'm happy to reshare it again. I can totally attest, Louisa, besides, like I'm already a very curious five-year-old on the inside that asks why and wants to know things, but Louisa is just like that, which is why <laughs> like our friendship is so strong. We're always so curious. So if you want to know something and she doesn't already have it, she's going to probably get the fire to find out. Yes, I try. And I mean, back like it up. It's, it's mostly women's health, right? Like, don't ask yeah. me about like, why is a car moving in that speed? I don't care. <laughs> well, that's a good point. Uh, Google.com. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, thanks for tuning in once again to this special series, The Experts I Know, and having Louisa here today. Thank you. Thank you for coming and taking the time as a new mom to be here and talk to us. Thank you thank for having you. me. <laughs>